Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video on the channel. And I'm revisiting another gun that it turns out I never did the full review on. And boy, do I forget to do that sometimes. The shorts have kind of overtaken my memory. So I'll do a short comparing a couple of guns and then I'll forget about it. And then I'll eventually come back to it. Today's gun is the CZ75 SP01 Tactical by CZ USA. We're going to go ahead and put that aside, take out one of the magazines, actually take out two of them. And I'm going to move this thing aside. I bought this gun used from Bear's Trading Post, Winchester, Virginia, and it did not come with a box. So I used the Pelican Vault. Not a plug. They don't pay me, but I love these things. They're very sturdy, and they are fully lockable and TSA approved. So if you need to ship one or take one on an airplane, get one of these. Coming back to the gun... Verify that it's clear. This is the SP-01 tactical variant of the CZ-75. It's kind of the everyday man version of a shadow. And before you flame me in the comments, I know it's not actually a shadow. Don't say, why would I say that? It's close enough. Shh. Also, don't forget to join the channel. Become a member. Help me grow it. Thank you. Love you. This is a gun that was introduced nearly 50 years ago, yet it still holds relevance and is considered a very reliable pistol even today. All steel construction on the SP-01 Tactical. There are other variants such as the SP-01 Phantom, which is actually a polymer frame version of this same gun. You can see the video up there. I'll link to it. I actually did that three, four years ago when I had one, and I wasn't happy with it because it was a nice shooting gun, but it wasn't a steel frame, and I like my steel frame and heavy frame guns. Speaking of heavy frame guns, this guy comes in at about 40 ounces dry, 40.5 actually. And with a loaded 18 round mag inserted, you're talking just shy of 46 ounces. That's pretty heavy for a gun. However, it makes it a very easily shootable gun. Being 9x19, 9, 9 parabellum, 9mm Luger, whichever way you like to call it, makes it a very shootable experience. That's why it has such a large dust cover. The large dust cover helps with mitigation. Man. I'm so technical. Came with two 18 rounders. This version did because this gun was built in 2014. However, I can tell you from personal experience that if you have magazines out of a CZ 75BD, they fit and work fine and they fit flush. So if you're going to carry this gun, that might be a better option so that you don't have an extra inch of material sticking out of your shirt. If you open carry, who cares? For a comparison in size, we do have my 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. This one is a government style, so it has a full 5-inch barrel. Size is very similar. This has a 4.7-inch barrel, so when they're chamber to chamber, you can see just a little bit of extra 1911 there. I carry this gun on a daily basis. This is the lightweight, so it's 32 ounces, but a regular full frame one weighs about 39 ounces, so again, very similar. And then another gun I open carry in the store is my 6 Hour X5 Legion. This one has a Romeo 1 mounted to the top, which unfortunately I gotta take off because I gotta add the shield because I keep smacking this into stuff at the store and I don't wanna break it eventually. Anywho, this one weighs 42 ounces dry, similar capacity, but as you can see, is a much larger gun, even though it is technically the same class. 41.5 ounces dry because of the tungsten infused alloy frame. Steadiest hands in the West. This gun also splits the difference between those two guns because this one is a hammer fired double action, single action firearm. For those of you that didn't watch the short, a double action firearm, let's go ahead and make sure, yep, the hammer is down, has a long, heavy first pull with the hammer down. However, once the gun cycles, has a much shorter and lighter trigger. We'll actually go more into the trigger feel later. Whereas a 1911 has a single action hammer fired gun. So when the hammer is back and you pull your trigger, that's it. And without it, can't do anything else. Whereas this guy is a single action striker fired gun. Boy, that, that fitment there, buddy. But you pull the trigger. Sorry, that threw me off there. This gun is very accurate, even though it's very wobbly. But once you pull the trigger, same situation. Dead. 
So this gun has an advantage over both of those because if you have a round that doesn't go off, you can pull it twice, or it also gives you the ability to decock it. What that means is once you cock the hammer back on this gun, you can go ahead and push down and it will bring the hammer to what they call half cocked. It's more of a quarter cock, but when you do that, it gives you a slightly lighter double action pull, but it does give you back a double action pull, making it nice. Whereas this guy, if you pull the trigger and you have a dead round, you have to rack it and get rid of the dead round. One of those. I like the ergonomics on this gun. Even though it is a heavier nose, the back half is very, very much CZ-75. In fact, a lot, a lot of the parts that interchange with any other CZ will interchange on this one, including the grips, which I will be changing out. I like these. They're rubberized. They feel good, but I prefer G10. Ask me why. And I'm putting a nice set of G10s on there, which will also break up the coloring a little bit. Has an ambidextrous decocker. It is not a safety model. However, I believe you can order a safety and replace the decocker safety with just a safety, but then you won't have a way to decock it other than your finger. Easy enough to manipulate. And the decocker works both sides. The magazine does appear to be reversible, but I have never tried it. The slide lock is only on one side. I like the light rail because it is a three slot pick rail, so you can add your lights, lasers, and tactical bazookas. The standard CZ75 tactical sport or the uh, shadow, I believe, do not have pick rails. Some of the newer ones, I think, have one slot, but again, that limits what you can run. I prefer at least a one slot. This is nicer, though, because then you can pull your lights back a little bit, then have them sitting underneath the front. Here, actually, I'll show you. There we be. Obviously, I installed this off camera because you can't do anything on YouTube without them getting a little bit butt hurt and angry at you these days. So keep that in mind, all you guys that are going to install things on camera. But this is a TLR7A. It's installed underneath the gun. And even though it is underneath the barrel, you do get a good throw of light. So for those of you going, why would you put a short light on a gun? Well, for some people, they can't afford multiple $200 lights or $150 lights. And why would you? So either run a bunch of O-lights or get one good stream light. Those are your choices. Oh, by the way, found another gun that actually closely resembles the functionality of the O-1 Tactical. And that is a Beretta 92. This one is the 90-2. You've seen the video on this. But yeah, double action, single action with a decocker. So a very similar pistol. However, I think we can all agree. I think the CZ looks sexier. Sexier. Plus, I just feel like throwing a bunch of guns on my couch because that's just the me. Me, Mario. So I'm going to go ahead and take that back off. So give me a sec. Oh, naked gun is good gun. But let's go ahead and talk about the trigger pull. In double action mode, they claim it's about 10 pounds. Feels every ounce of it. You can actually see the blood rushing to my cuticle there. Eh. but it's a smooth 10 pounds so when you pull it it just pulls straight back no staging even though if you let it go you can half cock it and then you have you can see a shorter trigger pull so all the way out standard half cock takes about half of the take up out of it and breaks in single action mode has a much shorter pull much farther for the take up as you can see it comes all the way back and it feels to be about four pounds for the trigger pull. Reset is at the break. So you don't get a whole lot of, I'd say, accuracy in the reset because you're coming back actually a little bit past the break and then resetting into it for a comparison. And this is probably one of the best triggers in the world. Not this exact one, but the 1911 platform. You can see very little take up on mine because I have it adjusted to act more like a shortish feeling trigger and yeah i haven't even replaced a spring in the back of this one yet and it's probably a three and a half four pound trigger and the reset is right where it breaks so a little bit more sloppy however these guns are well known to win championships in fact in 2005 first and third place went to shooters using this particular gun for ipsic so it is an effective firearm. I like the design of the back strap because of the way it comes and then it goes down straight back here. I like the feel of the front strap. The little bit of a hump down here is a nice shelf to put your finger on. And whether you're 
excuse me, running the extended base pad. If you have monstrous hands, I'm just barely over four feet tall, so I don't need a big grip. It's a joke, kids. But even with the flush fit, it doesn't doesn't really change anything to do with your grip unless you are Andre the Giant size or the Big Show or the Undertaker, and those are wrestling references. I put that back over there. Uh, one screw to hold the grips on. I like that. I have a set of G10s coming, as I said, that will look good. Coming up to the nose here, you will see that it has a almost like a bushing on the front, even though it's not, but they extended the barrel out just a little bit and then they built in almost a crown maybe to like look like their accu shadows and that's pretty interesting to see this particular one came out in 2014 so it does have a set of trijicon night sights on it from the factory however the night sights on here are dead so i will be changing these out for a new set that happens over time trijicon or excuse me the tritium is not a lifetime uh night sight thing yeah, has a flat top with serrations to hide glare, although I've never had that problem with any gun I've ever owned. External extractor, roll pins, roll pins, lots of roll pins in these guns. That's part of the firing pin block decocker mechanism, and that is for the extractor. Has a small-ish ejection port, however, it's tuned so nicely that it can eject out of a smaller ejection port better than, say, the 1911. Very nice. Let's go ahead and take her apart. Oh yeah, it has a lanyard back here. That doesn't really bother me. A little bit of checkering up there too. Never really paid attention to that. I'd prefer checkering that comes all the way across. I mean, you've already put it in the machine. Why don't you just run it all the way across? But in order to disassemble ACZ-75, first thing you do is make sure that it is clear. Second thing you're going to do is come back here and look at the rear of the slide and frame. You'll see a notch there just above the decocker and a notch on the frame. You need to line those up. What I found in my personal experience is if you half cock the gun, so you can see right there, it makes it super easy to line up right on the line because the gun wants to stop right there excuse me the slide wants to stop right in the marks now that makes it easier to hold because typically you do have to flip it over and use the base of your magazine to start your pin simply because of the weight of or excuse me the way that it's retained it's very tight in there it's not 1911 easy so go ahead and do that pull out your slide lock slide release set it down Grab a little piece of paper towel because I don't know the last time this gun was clean because my buddy's had it for the last two months. There we go. And then simply take the slide off. Recoil spring is not captive, so always keep that in mind. It does have on this version a polymer guide rod. I'd probably wind up replacing that if I'm going to do heavy use of the gun, but for everyday use, I'm sure it's fine have to look into getting a stainless steel guide rod for it and then here you got your barrel obviously this gun was made for other markets as well so it has a proof mark as well as a serial number here in the united states we do not track the serial number very nice uses the 1911 browning style lockup at the top which is again nice i like saying nice it's nice one thing i did to the gun that i do to all of my hammer fire guns and anything with rails is i tend to take the finish off i don't remember why i did it on this one but I did it anyways. Anything that makes your gun travel more smoothly on top of rails and stuff is a benefit. So you can see I kind of cleaned it up a little bit there. It's just very dirty. A little bit there as well. It makes it a little bit smoother, makes the experience a little bit nicer. Yes, I know CZs are nice out of the box, but everything can be a little bit better. Except for the Lagos Alien, but it's also a $5,000 gun. Dude knew I am tucking this way. But the barrel, as you saw, came out of the back, not out of the front, because that is all one big piece. And my God, that's a big hole. That's what she said. It's also because this slide is a similar slide to what's used on the BD, or excuse me, the 97s, which use the same basic setup. So they need to make sure the barrel can fit into this style slide. Speaking of which, you'll see the rails come all the way down. And they are the inverted rails. So you can see inside here, you do have the accepting rails, which is the basic inverse of, say, a 1911. So a 1911 or even the Beretta here, make sure it's empty, has usually just smaller rail pieces. And then the internal rails, the part that everything else inside slides on, is typically in the slides. Er, er, er. 
eat fruit. God, I love those. So that's what aids in the stability of the gun. And when we put it back together, I have something to point out that a lot of people miss. You can easily get upgrades to these triggers. You can put an Apex. You can put a Cajun Gunworks. I don't know if I'm going to modify this one. I mean, I'd like to, but I'm maybe going to give this to my guy Jim at Middletown and see what he can do with it in order to make it a little bit more shootable for me. But we can go ahead and put it back together. Take your barrel, drop it on the ground, put it back inside the firearm, take your spring, Make sure that it sits level and even so that you can slide it on correctly. Take it all the way to the end. You know what I mean. Start it on your rails. Should go on nice and smooth. Bring it back to your takedown mark. Actually, I'm going to start it here to make sure that it lines up correctly. There we go. Then take it back to the takedown mark and just simply push through. Once you've done that... Make sure you still have functionality. Now, one quick thing before we close out. A lot of people like to talk about how these have such a low bore axis. It has such a low bore axis. It doesn't. And I'm going to prove it to you. You see those two guns? They're barrel to barrel. The trigger's higher on the 1911. Which means you can get higher on the gun and closer to the barrel than you can on the CZ-75. And these both have beaver tails. And as you can see... They actually have very similar heights. This gives you a much more stable gun, but it's not a higher bore, a lower bore axis than, say, a 1911. Just not. Just isn't. And this is a 45, and it has the same bore axis. So when someone tells you that it gives you a lower bore axis, kick them in the balls, run away, and laugh. But anyway, that's it for today. There will be a short comparing a bunch of guns, so come back for that and enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Joe. This is the Jiminy Show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that good doodads. And, as always, I'll talk to you later.